The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. From the National Science Foundation, this is the Hour Report. Everyone enjoys going out for some fresh air. But what you may be breathing may not be as fresh as you think due to air pollution. The World Health Organization says 2.4 million people die each year from causes directly related to air pollution. How about accurate, detailed forecasts of air quality and knowing what you are breathing? Backed by several NSFRA grants totaling almost $1 million, Virginia Tech computer scientist Adrian Sandu is creating faster, more accurate air quality models. His team at Virginia Tech's Computational Science Laboratory is developing computer models and associated software to simulate the polluted atmosphere. The data will include emissions of pollutants from both natural and man-made sources. His sophisticated models of air quality are also helping policymakers decide the best strategies to clean up our air. By combining model predictions and instruments to gather observations, Sandu and his team hope to improve our understanding of the atmosphere and what controls the formation and distribution of pollution to make better forecasts a reality. Moths and other invertebrate animals can be used to help measure environmental health, but access to a database collection of these species has been difficult to come by. Thanks to an NSFR grant, a project led by scientists at Washington State and Western Washington State Universities, will develop a web searchable database that can give researchers around the globe easier access to one of the largest insect collections in the United States. It will include everything from where the specimen was collected to its DNA. With more than 3 million specimens dating back over 100 years, access to this information may provide a new tool for environmental scientists and will help to protect these irreplaceable collections. Arctic regularly consumed by wildfires could mean drastic changes to the global climate. Unusually warm air in the region makes it ideal for thunderstorms and deadly lightning. So far, this decade has produced more wildfires in the north slope of Alaska than any previous decade. It is here that one-third of the world's carbon lies trapped in the frozen soil. Thawing of this permafrost could cause a massive release of carbon and force ecosystems to adapt to the changing conditions. In 2007, the Nektavik River fire was the biggest wildfire ever recorded on the North Slope and scorched a 40 by 10 mile swath of tundra. With help of an ARA NSF grant, a team of ecologists from the Marine Biological Laboratories Ecosystem Center in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, analyzed the fire's impact on soil, nearby streams, and atmosphere about this to burn. This is a large landscape that's being changed. Whole watersheds are burned and uh, the ways that um, the vegetation and soils interact with the climate, the atmosphere, and then the permafrost beneath them um, has been changed on a very large scale. They learned that the carbon loss was massive. The blaze itself released about 1.9 million metric tons of CO2, an amount that some small nations emit in a year. And even one year after regrowth, the severely burned tundra continued to emit twice as much carbon as the unburned land. Immediate consequences of the fire reinforced the effects of a warming climate. As a result, the team will continue to examine the long-term effects on the Arctic tundra and the global environment. That's the Aura Report. I'm Dina Headley.